Rainbow Six Siege was the hottest game of 2017 that came out in 2015. Going from what some considered an underwhelming launch in mixed reviews to an overwhelming success with 30 million players and almost 114,000 average viewers during the 2018 Six Invitational Tournament, Rainbow Six Siege has become a glowing success. But what happened? What brought this game into the spotlight two years after its release? Well, that's what we're here to discuss today. Hi, I'm Alpha Lance with the Leaderboard, and today we're going to discuss why Rainbow Six Siege is gaming's greatest comeback. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to become part of the notification squad. <laughs> Pre-release. Rising from the ashes of the cancelled Rainbow Six Patriots, a trailer was released at E3 2014 for a new kind of tactical team-based multiplayer game. The footage shows an early multiplayer match with the offense team attempting to rescue a hostage from a defending team of terrorists on house. Then the team successfully breaks in and secures the hostage before moving to clear the house of enemies. Players have various loadouts, but no skins or class abilities. Players bust through walls, use explosives, break barriers, and coordinate an effective assault while enemies and teammates alike fall. The trailer ends with the last two players pointing guns at each other's heads, leaving us to wonder who was victorious. This teasing multiplayer demonstration piqued a lot of interest and was nominated by the Game Critics Awards for Best of Show, Best Action Game, and Best Online Multiplayer Game, and won Best PC Game at E3 2014. They were all set to launch in October of 2015, but pushed the date back to December 1st of 2015 to allow for a closed beta, followed by an open beta in the fall to build hype. Everything seemed ready for Rainbow Six Siege's holiday release. So, what happened? An unsatisfying release. Rainbow Six Siege was released as a full-priced retail game, but came out lacking what many thought a full-priced game should include. It didn't have a single-player campaign requiring its players to play online at all times, all of its operators had to be individually unlocked with in-game currency renown, and its map pool felt very limited. Before it even launched, players were put off by Ubisoft announcing a season pass, which typically ends up creating a divide between players, as well as in-game microtransactions. Players started to feel like they were only buying the body of a car, even if that body was very well polished. Rainbow Six Siege received generally favorable reviews from critics, praising Anvil Engine's level of destruction, the tactical nature of matches, and how it fostered communication between players. However, the reviews just didn't change the fact that people were not buying the game. Siege launched a free weekend shortly after its release, and reduced its price, but this came off as a little desperate and led some players to believe that Ubisoft would eventually release the game as free to play, and some decided to just wait it out. And Ubisoft's goal of 7 million units sold seemed like a pipe dream. More content. Two months later, Ubisoft made good on its promise of the season pass and released its first DLC. Operation Black Ice went live, and with it came two new operators, Buck and Frost, from a new country, Canada, a new map, yacht, and patch notes that helped change up the multiplayer. And season pass players weren't the only ones who got to use the new heroes. Ubisoft adopted the games as a service model and planned to release all of its downloadable content for free for all players. And in 2018, they announced that they'd be giving updates for the next 10 years. With constant maintenance and a roadmap of content, players started to see that Ubisoft had not given up on its latest Tom Clancy game. As time went on, the game would only become fatter, fuller, better. Gamers are always happy with more content, but some of that can just be icing on the cake. It doesn't matter how much icing you have, if you have a shitty cake, it's just a shitty cake with extra decoration. But Siege was always a good game at its core and was never a shitty cake. The game's fun. No one argued that. Sort of. Upon release, the game's multiplayer was widely praised by critics. It was called, quote, a psychological race, unpredictable, and fresh. A multiplayer that could be played for hours without getting stale. Even with only the original content, there were hundreds of team compositions, various equipment and attachment combinations, and enough ways to mix it up that no two matches would ever feel the same. Rainbow Six Siege was, and is, an original multiplayer experience that is different enough to be exciting, but similar enough to be familiar. The core first-person shooter skills of aiming and flanking are still necessary to Siege, but there's that X Factor, the Siege in Rainbow Six Siege. In other first-person shooter games, you're given the liberty of multiple lives. In other words, you've got the chance to make mistakes and continue playing anyways. Rainbow Six Siege does not give you this liberty and instead punishes players for little mistakes with big consequences. You have to learn from your mistakes. At first, this is incredibly frustrating. You bought a new game and you want to play it, but you don't even get the chance to pull the 
the trigger between learning the operator's unique abilities, the confusing multi-floored maps, and the new mechanics like destructible walls that your opponents will take full advantage of, you'll be left feeling a step behind. It's definitely punishing at first, but then everything starts to click. When it happened for me in a match, that moment I picked off an enemy, used my gadget effectively, and survived to the end of the round, it was a game changer. No other game has given me that kind of satisfaction in any other multiplayer experience before or since. Sure, when you die, most of the fun is over, but you can still participate. Allowing dead players to spectate on cameras to ping enemy positions and remain on comms allows all players to contribute until the end of the round. Whether that's to totally judge your teammates or learn from your allies is your choice. In Rainbow Six Siege, casual matches last about 9 to 18 minutes. And like popcorn, it's almost impossible to just have one. You gotta grab a handful. One more match, one more match, one more match, one more match. The machine just kept pumping. Part of the reason for Siege's success is that Ubisoft never seemed to give up on it, even when things looked bleak. When a game doesn't make back its initial cost during a holiday release, the time of year companies release their biggest fish in the hopes of showing up in kids' laps as gifts from parents they hope don't notice the rating on the box, you know things aren't going as planned. At first, Ubisoft's scary season pass felt like a money grab to milk even more from its fans, but it turned out to be a promise of more content. Pumping out patch after patch, operator after operator, and reinforcement after reinforcement, Ubisoft kept sweetening the pot to encourage new gamers to check out Rainbow Six Siege. They also offered free weekends to allow new players to dip their toes. Your own host Alphalance here got hooked by such a tactic. Who passes up on a free game on a bored weekend? and you get to start playing with people at your skill level rather than seasoned pros. Hell, you can even keep your progression if you buy later, so why not try it out? Then Ubisoft started to focus more on creating a great community by banning other players. Now I know some folks fear the B word, but banning struck the hardest at the players who were having fun at the expense of others. Hackers, cheaters, and later toxic, inappropriate players would all be told, you are not wanted here. Aside from making the game a safer, more fun environment, it also told fans and players that Ubisoft wasn't simply looking for player counts. They weren't looking for numbers, but for a community. They weren't afraid to reduce their own numbers because they cared more about quality than quantity. The biggest hit of 2017 that came out in 2015. In 2016, Rainbow Six Siege announced its eSports Pro League for March 2017. The league coincided with Siege's updates before its Year 3 DLC, with three seasons per year followed by a fourth season that held the Six Invitational, the Super Bowl of Rainbow Six Siege. In 2017, we saw Operation Health that aimed to fix server and connection issues that had plagued players for years. And while we still see plenty of issues, it was nice to see Ubisoft putting in some effort and listening to the will of the people. And even though Operation and health denied us a season of new content they made up for it by releasing an extra operator with the next two seasons, making the new seasons look even juicier. Year 1 had added 10 new operators, and Year 2 in 2017 promised to do the same. By the second Six Invitational in 2018, it was apparent Rainbow Six Siege had taken off. On August 4th of 2017, Ubisoft had announced that Siege had broken 20 million players, and 8 months later on April 12th, 2018, Ubisoft happily declared 30 million players worldwide. In 2017, the Six Invitational had a league for Xbox One and PC, each represented by six competing teams and a combined prize pool of 200,000 US dollars. The following year, it dropped the Xbox One League, but had 16 PC teams from around the world competing for a prize pool of 500,000 US dollars, representing Brazil, France, Finland, Japan, Germany, Australia, Russia, Sweden, Canada, Spain, Denmark, Mexico, Switzerland, Belgium, Belgium, and the United States. Yeah. On March 5th, 2018, Rainbow Six Siege reached its all-time peak of simultaneous players on Steam at 176,208 players. With over 100,000 players logging in every day, it truly feels like Siege has picked up Steam. Uh, uh... Can't stop, won't stop. Once again, Ubisoft has promised to support Rainbow Six Siege for the next 10 years, with no plans of a sequel or a spin-off. Bungie promised us the same thing though with Destiny, which fell through, so my hopes as a gamer are hesitant, but I would like to truly see this game get the support it deserves for years to come.
With the year three roadmap posted, we can see the content for 2018 and look forward to the six invitational of 2019. With year three season two Parabellum now live and more in the pipeline, the game is looking as juicy as ever. And like the fine wine you can find in the cellar of Villa, it'll only get better with age. And if this wasn't enough to get you to jump on board already, Ubisoft still offers free weekends occasionally so you can try the game out without spending a penny. Now that is truly a flashbang for your buck. We have just entered Season 2 of Year 3 of Rainbow Six Siege. Who knows what the future holds, but from what we can see from Siege's history so far, Ubisoft appears to be doing alright, keeping the game interesting, active, and very much alive. When did you start playing Rainbow Six Siege? What do you think we'll see from Siege going forward? More of the same, or do you predict a curveball like Outbreak? Tell us your thoughts in the comments below. And once again, I'm your host, Alpha Lance, with the Leaderboard, and if you haven't already, subscribe if you liked this video and hit that bell icon to become part of the notification squad. And don't forget to stay tuned to the Leaderboard, your home for video game facts.